I would say the only person that doesn't need to come to expo is somebody that has thinks they have it all figured out. I mean, you're going to walk around and assume that, you know, more than everyone who's presenting and sharing their wisdom, then it might not be worth your money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Having that, like that closed off mindset is, is kind of a kind of buzzkill. Buzzkill for sure. <laughs> Welcome to the Painter Growth Podcast, where we help you scale your painting company in record time. Join us as we explore sales, marketing, hiring, finances, leadership, and more, everything that you need to know to scale and grow your painting business. I hope you enjoy and subscribe. What's up, everybody? Mike Gorickman here, founder of PainterGrowth.com, and you're listening to a expo episode of the Painter Growth Podcast. And I have the um, chief content, no, content chair, chair of content, you sit on top of the content of the PCA Expo, uh, Maggie basically organizing the Expo. So stoked to have you here and to learn more about the Expo, what people can expect and uh, whether or not they'll have a good time. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks for yeah. having me. So let's just like, just like zoom out. What is the, what is the purpose of the PCA Expo? Um, at its core, the purpose of Expo is to bring everyone together in the organization, in the industry to provide um, not only a time of community and fellowship, but also a time for um, education, growth. Uh, I think, you know, anytime you're a part of something coming together, it's just going to deepen those roots and deepen the understanding Um and then just providing a ton of content and education and food. <laughs> we feed you. Gotta, you eat. gotta like, eat, right? Eat, Especially right? Your brain's going in overdrive, right? And you're yeah. not going to do stop. You gotta stay. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Okay. So so you get like the, the camaraderie, the sense of community, and the education. Yeah. I kind of like the outcome. And I've heard it called the Super Bowl of the painting industry. Yeah. Right? Come from. Uh, it's very accurate. I mean, it's the only event of its kind. I mean, there's no other organization that, you know, encompasses all painting contractors and to get everyone together is big. And it's um, what our vendors kind of, like you said, they treat it as their like big opportunity and big chance to pour into us um, and love on us. So the parties are Super Bowl style. The, you know, the educational content is where we, you know, put all of our resources and time into. So it's, it's really just the biggest effort we could all put into putting on a show for everyone. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm so to learn more about it. This is going to be my first expo this year. Um, but I want to, before, like, just to, to, to pull off the bandaid, like, who is it for? And, um, yeah, first of all, who is it for? Who should be thinking about attending the expo? So one of the cool things that happened in the last few years is, is the old answer was painting contractors or the owner of a paint company. And over the last probably three or four years, uh, PCA has really made a push to kind of broaden the expo for um, more everyone involved in running a paint company. And so we have really broadened the content not just for owners. There's a ton of, of content that is, you know, pretty specific for an owner operator, but you know, now we've really increased sales training, marketing training, operations training, project management training, admin training. And so really anybody who's involved in anything on the business side of a paint company is going to benefit from, from Expo. So not just the owners, but like production managers, sales yeah. staff, administrators. Yep. I'm bringing my whole team. How many people? There's 10 of us coming. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. You guys going to do a big Disney day after? No, I can't afford that after bringing 10 people to Orlando for the week. <laughs> Plus, let's keep in mind that's everyone. So who's left back for the jobs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. That's okay. So, so um, is there like a business size? Like some people listening in, like I'm too small or like I'm too big. I won't get value out of it. Is there like an ideal size? No, that's another thing we're super specific on is, is when we comb through the content and the topics, not only is it, you know, what are all the parts of the business we can cover or the roles in the business we can help, but also, you know, the needs of the type of business and the size of business are, are unique. So um, are you a $30 million commercial company? We're kind of going through and trying to make sure there's at least one session 
um, at every breakout that is applicable to your business? Are you a solo um, business owner who's in your first year and still learning the ropes? Like there's, and these are the things that we, that we think about as we're planning the content and that we try to balance on the schedule and make sure that there's something for everyone at every session. Um, and that's super intentional uh, because there are insanely awesome one man shows and there are insanely awesome $30 million companies and everything in between. <laughs> okay. So even the person like just getting started one man band, trying to grow the company to the, the big enterprise companies who've, who've yeah. got it figured out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I would say the only person that doesn't need to come to Expo is somebody that has thinks they have it all figured out. I mean, you're going to walk around and assume that you know more than everyone who's presenting and sharing their wisdom, then it might not be worth your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Having that like that closed off mindset is is kind of a kind of buzzkill. Buzzkill, for sure. <laughs> so um, what is the, just to get it out of the way early, how much is it to go to the Expo? Ooh, good question. Um I know there's different rates based on being a PCA member and non. Um, however, with that, it's almost more cost effective to join the PCA and then sign up. <laughs> um, current pricing right now for members is $1,000 to attend. And that includes your all your content and all your food from sunup to sundown. So starting Tuesday morning at breakfast to Friday morning, everything's taken care of. All your food. It's a lot of yep. food. Yep. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Um, so just getting out of the way, yeah, thousand bucks to attend a five, five day, four and a half day event. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good value. Pretty yeah, good value. for sure. For sure. <laughs> and it's a tax write-off, right? It's above, I mean, it's the above line. It's it's investing. Also, a reason to go to Orlando and maybe take the family on a little Disney trip. Yeah, right. It's just a good time to go to Orlando. Um, okay, so let's now let's now look into the actual expo and like what the person, what the attendees' experience is going to be. So it starts on Monday afternoon. Um, we do have um, there's registration and kind of like a little happy hour Monday afternoon. Um, I believe that. Yep, sponsored by. PPG. And there's definitely a lot of people that come into town Monday. So there's usually, you know, good amount of camaraderie and hanging out on Monday. And then expo content kicks off Tuesday morning. Okay. So um, that we are actually kicking off expo with a world renowned keynote speaker. So for sure worth it to come in Monday because okay. eight o'clock. Tuesday morning is a kickoff with our speaker. Is it a secret who it is? No, uh, his name is Chad Hymas. He is a Wall Street Journal top 10 most inspirational speaker. Um, we had a Women in Paint commercial conference with PCA back in November that he spoke at. And um, I don't know that there was not a person in the room who didn't say that that was the most motivational an impactful thing they'd ever heard. He's, um, uh, when he was, I think in his twenties, he shattered his neck with a 2000 pound bale of hay. He's a farmer and a bale, a 2000 pound bale of hay landed on his head and shattered his neck. So he's quadriplegic and he travels the world talking about travels the world by himself talking about, um, serving others and leadership and, um, you know, just kind of leaving a legacy is really his message. So he's an amazing. Love amazing. It. Yeah. Maybe we're to like kick it off. And if, if you, someone's coming in or maybe they're not the most open or receptive to new content and new information, that'll definitely open them up to it. Yeah. Yeah. He's, um, and he sticks around after he speaks and he'll talk to you. He'll, sit with you. I mean, he's just the real deal, but he's, um, if you look him up, Chad Hymas, H Y M A S, you'll see, um, he is definitely a, um, world renowned speaker. Okay. Awesome. So with that, um, so after Chad, 
so you so you come in Monday, Tuesday, uh, have a little party, meet some people, do some networking. Yeah. And then after that, you um, go have a great night's sleep, um, listen to Chad, and what happens next? So then we pretty much kick off the expo, which um, isn't too different from your, you know, your typical uh, uh, conference for anything. Um, we've got an award ceremony where we honor um, those who were chosen for the PCA awards. Um, we have uh, another speaker coming to talk about leadership. His name's Rocky Cherry. He owns Cherry Coatings which is a very large coast-to-coast uh, coast 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 commercial company. And Rocky is a former, former uh, Major League Baseball player. So he kind of talks about lessons in leadership from baseball to, to running this mega company. <laughs> um, and then we were, go into our breakout sessions, which is where you kind of have the opportunity to pick. There's anywhere from, depending on the day and time, there's anywhere from six to nine sessions that you can choose from. Um, again, like I mentioned before, topics ranging from production to estimating to leadership to hiring. Um, really, we've tried to think through everything and make sure that it's covered. And yeah, you attend the breakout sessions. Uh, it's always so hard to pick. So PCA, if you do attend Expo, you have access to all the classes that you weren't able to sit in on. So that's another great benefit um, is that if you're a member and attend Expo, obviously you can't sit through every session. So you do have the opportunity to go back and watch those afterwards, which so is... you do bring anyone on your team, like you could attend one and another team. Yeah, members. so I mean, I literally have a map of the schedule and then I have like, this person's going to this talk, this person's going to this talk. Yeah, like I'm like, divide and conquer, we're going. Yeah. So is the education chair... Like how many moving parts is that? We've been working on this since June. So it's a lot of moving parts. Um, how many individual speakers? If you look in total interest, I'm just interested to know. Let's see, I think one, two, three. There's probably 40 and then all the panels. It's a good list. It's a lot of, that's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of logistics there. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so how can, um, how do you recommend someone comes in and like gets the most out of Expo? Mm -hmm. like, never been there. Like how do you really maximize your, your, you know, three and a half days of content? So our first Expo, my husband and I went, Matt is his name and is in Savannah. We were, uh, maybe two or three year old company um, doing pretty well, good revenue, good profit. And we were kind of like, yeah, I mean, we'll go, we'll see what it's about. You know, we're PCA members and we kind of like skipped the first few sessions. We were like, I don't know, like none of these topics are really interesting. Like, I don't know who these people are. I don't know what a brain meld is. We'll just like hang out and get some emails done and then we'll go check in like at 11. I think the 11 o'clock session looks cool. And that was the biggest mistake we could have made because we had no idea what we missed. And when we walked in at 11 and saw just kind of like the momentum and the energy and the, the topics being spoken of and the people presenting that we didn't know, um, we were like, Oh crap. Like, that could have been the answer to all of our issues listening to that person, or that could have been like the, you know, the next piece of tidbit for growth or for optimization or whatever. So definitely making sure that you, to your capacity, I realize it's a lot, but, you know, making sure that you're not skipping out just to like get work done or just because you like aren't really sure if the topics are for you. Um, to just really dive all in and and attend the the sessions and attend the happy hours and in between when we have breaks and people are gathering at you know the snack table, yeah, there's 600 people. That's kind of intimidating, but like, don't go hide in your room because I can guarantee you there's a relationship there that is probably going to change your business in some way. You know. Yeah, I mean the the content is one thing, but the the networking is like 
probably like the less spoken about, but like equally important aspect. Yeah. I mean, it's really atypical. I joke that we like feed you for the week and it's very atypical and it's very expensive. Um, but we do that because we understand like the camaraderie that's happening at this event. And there's this unique culture of, of sharing and encouragement and cheerleading and, um, you know, optimism that happens with, with PCA members. And you're the fourth person I've talked to today. This is just like a Friday. I have Facebook message with a girl from women in paint. I had a phone call with an awesome dude in Raleigh, Durham. And then I was emailing with a friend. We were tossing back and forth some marketing ideas. And all three of these people are friends that I made through Expo. You know, like, don't skip out on anything. Yeah. like Slash yourself for three days. <laughs> like the, the fires in the business can just wait for a minute until you're done the conversation. Are there really any emergencies in paint? That's what I always ask my team. I'm like. What is it, the Nick that says no paint emergencies? Yeah, I mean, there are some. Let's There's like some. call a spade a spade, but also, I mean. Yeah, can wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, going to going to one day of content can be overwhelming, right? One day of talks, let alone like <laughs> two and a half days of talks. <laughs> Let's say you go to like, what, 12 sessions over, you know, three and a half days, four days. How do you, I mean, you can't avoid overwhelm, but how do you best deal with that? Like, what have you found to be like effective ways for, for remembering and making a plan uh, to like leave Expo rather than yeah. just, you know, attending and not making a change based on what you learned? Yeah. Um, I think obviously if you bring your team or even just one person from your team, or even if your spouse is involved, maybe not heavily, but like is interested in coming along, um, I think accountability is important, right? We can all walk away with a million things on our list and a million new ideas. But if you don't have a peer or a coach or a partner, whether it's an emotional partner, a business partner, or a team who you can kind of share that list with and, and kind of keep accountability. Both accountability is that you're doing it, but also is this what we should be doing? Um, so definitely making sure you go in thinking ahead of time, like what is going to be my accountability on the back end with this? And then, I mean, for me personally, I'm a list, like I'm going to show up with my notepad and just take notes. And then I, I'm the type of learner. I'm just going to take all the notes and not really think through it. And then when I have a minute, I'm going to kind of go back through, you know, and have those aha moments and those, of epiphany pieces, but I'm not, I'm not trying to change my business while I'm at Expo. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotcha. You're not like texting your, your production manager and saying, Hey, start doing this. Yeah. Yeah. We did that our first Expo. We were like, we're going to, we're a sub model. So we left our first Expo. We're like, we're, this is it. We're going employee. We're going to do this and we're going to change this. And we had a, like, we sat at a, at a brewery in Savannah for like three hours, like mapping out our structure. And then we went home and like met with our subs and they were like, no, <laughs> no. And I was like, okay, well, I just wasted all of expo. <laughs> yeah. It was like narrow vision by the time it was done. So yeah, I think just keeping an open mind and then making sure you have someone or someone's to process it with after. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's easy to like go to an event like this, get all like riled up and rah rah, and then go back to try it, you know, home and talk to your spouse or talk to your team, be like, oh, look at all this. And they're just like not on the same level yeah. as you. I mean, that's why we started bringing our team. I was so sick of going home and be like, y'all, we need to try this and check out this software. And I learned this awesome tip from this person. And they're all staring at me like, can we leave now? Because we've got paint emergencies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that um, if you're bringing back any information to your team, you need to like really slowly, like very slowly yeah. release it, you know, dish it out to them. I was like the airplane, the airplane ride. I get a lot of work done the airplane. Oh, so, like on the way uh, back? Yeah. When I'm Is that your decompress? Like, yeah, it's like my decompress, but like go through my notes because like I usually don't buy internet on the plane for a reason so that I like don't get distracted on like messenger mm -hmm. or stuff like that. So I'm just like, Go through my notes, type them out, process them, make a plan. I'm a big list person too, but that's usually that's my safe place. <laughs> that's funny. I should try that. It's a good idea. 
Yeah, I, I can't watch movies on the plane. I just like I need mm. to I need to work. It's like it's maybe, awesome. Maybe a sickness. That's a good hack. Yeah. So um I guess I guess moment Moon, I want to ask you just a random question. Do it. What is the most memorable moment of any expo that you've been to? Um, I think my my most memorable moments uh not able to decide between them, but they all have been at the vendor parties. Um, and I am, I just want to like caveat here. I'm not a big partier. Like I'm not like, I'm not like a woo girl. I live in Nashville, but I don't go to Broadway. Um, so by no means am I like, yeah, like come to expo to get, you know, like partied. But um, there's something magical about well, let's just say it, the amount of resources that go into these parties. Our vendors are very generous and want to thank us for the business. Um, so there have been some pretty neat experiences in our first expo, the Sharon Williams party. Um, they had a they had a hand magician walking around and doing like card magic. Like, mm, like a slayer hand. hand. Yeah, like just the, the legit kind too, you know, yeah. not like the kid's birthday party guy. Um, so like little things like that where you're just like, okay, this is so cool. Like I don't go to parties on a regular basis that have magicians walking around, you know? Yeah. Um, last year in Albuquerque at the Ben Moore party, we all laugh and it was like, we called it Benjamin Moore's wedding because they had a huge, they had a huge party at the hotel. So it was like in the hotel, like a wedding reception. And we were all dancing on the dance floor. Like we were at someone's wedding and the party was so fun and everyone was having such a blast that Ben Moore kept it open like two and a half hours longer than scheduled. Um, you know, way extended their F and B budget that they had planned on because everyone was having so much fun just yeah. dancing in a hotel. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's just, I don't know. Um, it's just icing on the cake when you've worked really hard all day with these people. And like, we've all sat there watching each other, like think and study and take notes and, and learn and grow and ask hard questions both internally and externally. And to then just kind of like let loose and, and get to play. Playing is fun. Yeah, you don't get to do it very often in like your day to day, especially if you have like a family, it's, it's hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So those are, those are my favorite memories. Um, again, not because, of the free booze, but really genuinely because of the, the fun, the play. Yeah, I get that. I totally get that. So what are the different types of sessions that people can expect? So there's, you know, there's speakers where there'll be like one speaker on stage where we'll be listening yeah. to like Nick or Jason or like, you know, successful people talk about a specific, you know, subject. What else can we expect? Um, so other than we call those main stage. So we've got main stage speakers where we're all together as a community listening to the same message. Um, another great one that we have coming in for main stage is Nicole Klein. Her husband is Phil Klein, who's a awesome friend of everyone in the paint industry, but she's a Dale, Carne Dale Carnegie certified instructor. So that's going to be kind of cool. She works for a GC. So kind of talking about mindset and all these things she's learned. Um, and then there's breakout sessions. So the breakout sessions happen every day. And it's kind of what I mentioned before, where during an hour, an hour and a half block, there's like anywhere from six to 10 classes that you can attend. Um, you'll know ahead of time, so you can kind of plan it out. But there's one, two, th there's six total breakout sessions. So great opportunity. Yeah, six, two kind of really um, dig into some details and evolve as it goes. And then the other thing how's we have- How does a breakout session work? So there, um, the schedule's on pcapainted.org. If you go to the expo page, there's a schedule. Um, it kind of starts to highlight the education sessions and when they are. But the breakout sessions are in different rooms. So there's anywhere from you know six to 10 different rooms and then It'll either be a speaker. So for example, Chris Moore um, from Elite Business Advisors is speaking on growing through referral business. So his is a breakout session. It's an hour and a half. It's just him 
talking to a room about that topic. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we have a panel um, in another room where Nick Slavic is moderating. We've got um, John Bryant, Torlando Hakes, and Zach Kenny, and they're speaking on the power or the art of estimating. So Nick will kind of be doing a panel discussion with three, three, these three guys on estimating. And so in those breakout rooms, that's pretty much what you're going to see. There's either going to be a speaker um, or a panel. And we have two or three panels and two or three speakers, you know, plus or minus it at all the sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what you said something earlier about a brain melt. Yeah. So those are like the secret favorite part of Expo. Brain melds are um, like the speed dating of business. So every table has a topic. So there's probably going to be, you know, 60 some tables. And there will be a little topic at the table, like estimating, uh, compensating your sales team, onboarding subcontractors, um, color consulting, like whatever. There's 60 topics. <laughs> and you get like a, I, I don't know if it's 10 minutes. I think it's 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to sit at the table and you guys talk about that. And there's either a moderator or some questions based on the topic. And so it's great to hear. Like, how are you compensating your sales team? Are you doing it commission? Are you doing it, you know, salary? What are their expectations? And kind of hear um, from peers in the industry. And then the timer goes off and like speed dating, you get up and you move to another table. <laughs> so it's a great way to kind of get a bunch of information, meet a bunch of people. Everyone's passing around business cards because, you know, Mike, will, Mike, you'll sit at a table and you'll be saying something and people will be like, dude, that guy's really smart. Hey, can I have your card so we can, you know, follow up on this? And, you know, or maybe someone hears us talking about our sub model and say, hey, you mentioned a contract. Hey, here's my card. Can I get a copy of that contract? And so there's just so much um, information sharing at these tables. They're awesome. Yeah. It really sounds like you need to dive into two feet in order yeah. to get the most. You can't kind of be half in, half out of those types of sessions. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And those are what the brain melt is one of the things Matt and I skipped our first year because we were like, what's a brain melt? That sounds stupid. And we walked in on like the tail end and just like felt the energy of, of the people, you know, sharing ideas and networking and um, everyone was having, we were like, oh man, we just missed something really good. Yeah, totally. So those are the types of sessions with main stage, breakouts, panels, brain melts. Yep. That's pretty much what you can expect in the educational portion of it. Yep. Cool. And then there's the trade show. Yeah. So Super. What's that like? So the trade show is like any trade show, you know, home and garden, just a heck of a lot smaller. Um, but all of our vendors are industry partners. Um, and, you know, whether they're manufacturers, suppliers, coaches, marketing, softwares, um, you name it. And they all have booths set up and you can walk around. There's um, it's a great chance to meet people. I know for our company, um, it's important, you know, whatever software we use, I want to know, like, I want to know those people. I'm not just going to sign up for the software. So last year we used um, the trade show to walk around and talk face to face with, you know, the, the different software companies that we were kind of eyeing for our projects to, to make sure that like they're the people that we would want to work with when we needed a question or, a, you know, a problem. Um, there's lots of giveaways, you know, everyone's trying to get you to come to their booth. So they've got all kinds of fun swag you can take or win. Um, and it's, it's just a time to network with our vendors. Nice. That's yeah. fun. I'm, I'll be there. Um, I'm you got a booth, give, don't you? I'm going to give away two sure shot sprayers. No way. Yeah. You're I'm bougie. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> what do I they have to do to get a sprayer? I haven't decided yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm thinking maybe we'll do like a roll thing at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, like roll cage bingo. Uh -huh. you know what I'm so, and then I'll have them there like on a stand and people get to walk home with them. So that'll be fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I've got some logistics to figure out, but uh, yeah, give away a couple of those, make a little, make a little noise. Um, and so how many, how many vendors are at the trade show? Do you have an idea? Mm. Not your part, but that is not my part. I know the booths are sold out. 
Um, I don't have that number, but a lot and, and really, really wide breadth. So there's marketing companies and I just don't mean, you know, Facebook only, but I mean, companies that can help you with commercial re outreach, um, SEO, Google, et cetera. There's, you know, all the paint suppliers, business coaches, et cetera. There's a lot. Yeah. Awesome. More and so like I guess less than a thousand. And it'll be a party and it'll be a party Thursday night too, right? So there's two party. Actually, there's more than two parties. There's four. So Tuesday, Monday night, we have the PPG welcome reception. Um, Tuesday, there is a women in paint happy hour. Sorry, Mike, you can't come. Um, Bear is awesome. And they host that every year. Awesome. And then Wednesday is Ben Moore's party, which is at the hotel. And that's something to keep in mind too. Um, everything's at the Swan Dolphin. So um, until the end, all the events, all the lunches, all the, everything's there. So right. Wednesday night, Ben Moore hosts at the hotel, um, their party, which is always fun. Like I said, it's a wedding, or at least was last year. And then Thursday, Sherwin, Thursday evening, Sherwin is hosting their event offsite. So mm -hmm. last year in Orlando, it was at Disney Springs, which was really, really fun. And they bus us offsite. Um, they put on a show. And where is it this year? I can't say. Mm -hmm. That's a secret. Exciting. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the fun of the Sherwin event is kind of keeping it a surprise. But um, last year it was at this really cool little like Albuquerque Mexican restaurant and they had all kinds of like really rare tequila tastings and mariachi bands and it was it was pretty fun. It was That's pretty awesome. cool. I'm actually learning Spanish right now so it sounds like it's perfect timing. There you go. <laughs> perfect timing for me to embarrass myself. Yeah. And then uh, Friday is painting. Friday. Yeah. So because of the paint it board event is awesome. Last year in Albuquerque we had like a hundred and 40 some people come paint um, on behalf of a nonprofit. And so this year, um, you get a lot of production hours done in how many people? Yeah, well, not everyone was a painter. So, uh, little inefficiencies. There were like some areas that my man, maybe I won't say his name, and his marketing company tried to paint door frames. And let's just say it was probably a little bit more embarrassing. Was it Eric? No. Okay. <laughs> I would say his name. Okay. Um, yeah, I would be like, Eric, let's see. I'm trying to look it up. I don't have it in front of me, but my understanding is there's an organization that PCA has partnered with. And I apologize for not knowing it. We've been back and forth on um, where we landed an event, but it is, I do, I don't know the name of it, but they do, they kind of work similarly to a, uh, um, make a wish for young mm -hmm. kids. And so their lobby. What kind, of, what kind of building are you guys painting? Do you know? It's like a commercial lobby where, where the kids come to like, you know, be enveloped into this mm -hmm. nonprofit and, and love on them. Like a little community center. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, well, if you get the link for that, that charity, I can put the link in the description. So people can cool. check it out. Thanks. Yep. I'll need to triple check with Jason that it's done. So this is a Monday, uh, sorry, basically a Monday night to Friday afternoon affair. Yeah. That's a big commitment for people. Yeah. <laughs> right. So other than us just going through everything in great detail there, what is your best pitch for why someone should attend the expo and commit a week of their life instead of making money in their right. business? This will make you money. <laughs> Um, our core value in our company, one of our five core values is continuous improvement. And I don't bat an eye at sending 10 of my teammates, meaning nobody's left home except my painters for a whole week, um, to something I have to pay for, <laughs> um, asking them to be away from their families, away from their jobs. Um, because I believe in 
pouring into yourself and um, growing your brain, growing your brand, growing your people. Um, there's nothing else like it. So there's no saying, well, I'm going to go to this instead. Or I'm going to go to this instead. Like this is your opportunity to have super specific industry training um, around people who are like-minded in the sense that they want to grow their businesses. And so if that's not worth money, if that's not worth the extra prep to be gone, um, then maybe plan for it next year. Like if you're not there, if that makes your tummy hurt, like um, maybe that needs to be a future goal, right? Like how can I get to where next year's expo 2025, I have the money to pay for it and the time, you know, set up to be away. But I would argue that between cell phones, Wi-Fi, and a little extra grunt work, leaving town for four and a half days is probably doable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's not you know, paycheck to paycheck, need the need the the finish the job to pay rent. Like as long as you're not in that situation, right? That, and that's where I say, make it a goal if that's yeah. where you are, because you might not be ready for it in a month, but maybe it's something you need to start focusing on. Because if you are paying a paycheck or if you, what? It is a month away, month today. It is a month today. <laughs> so if, it, if you are paycheck to paycheck, if it does feel impossible to leave your business for a week, then I would flip it around and say expo probably is for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you might need to lean into the experts that do have the money and time and systems to, to step away for four and a half days of growing yourself as a business owner. Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think you did a good job with that, that big question that I asked you. So I'm in, I'll be there. So yeah, you better do it. Let's, uh, Grab some food. Any any listeners want to come hang out with me? Then let me know. Maggie too. We're gonna be come shake all. hands with the Mike Gore Hickman. It'll He's be great. Yeah, that's what I heard. Well, uh, Maggie, thank you for your time today. Always a pleasure, and um, so stoked to hang out with you in person and I know in all that is Expo. Sweet. Let's do it. See you soon. Thanks for listening to the Painter Growth Podcast. If you want to grow your painting business, go to www.paintergrowth.com or click on the top link in the description. Talk soon.